that works really well. There we go. The ability to change the filament right on the screen, it's just not the same. Welcome back, folks. Today, I've got some new filament coming in, so we're gonna get that loaded up into some of these printers and test it out. Big Tree Tech also sent over their Panda Touch for the P1P, so we're gonna get that installed. And they also sent over one of the cryo grip plates for us to try out. And upon initial inspection of it, at least, it looks really similar to the one that I have on the P1P right now. So I'm really excited to see if that style plate has the same adhesion on the one that I'm used to. Because if that's the case, they do make it for other printers in that uh, pro, I don't know what it's called. It's the darker of the blue. Let's jump right into it. Big Tree Tech sent over their Panda Touch for the P1P. So we're gonna get that installed today. Installation is a breeze. Essentially, this back plate comes off of our main unit here. There are two screws that you thread into this little guy here. Then it magnetically attaches back onto it and you can remove the double-sided tape and this just sticks on top of the machine. I am going to have to pull this guy out a little bit more though, kind of letting it hang over the edge just a bit because the way that I have this set up, it's not quite going to fit in there just like that. All right, that guy's secured into there. Push this back as far as I can get it to go. So there's a little USB port on the back side of the P1P, basically on the other side of this screen. It's a little hard to see, but if you get up in inside of there, you can plug your USB cable in. We're gonna set this up with English, click next, connect it to Wi-Fi. So we have all of our information loaded in here as far as our files go. Uh, like I said before, you are able to pull this off and continue to use it that way. So. If I wanted to go home, we can see what we have going on on the printer right now. I can turn the light on and off, good stuff like that. And that is set to the battery mode. So when you dock it, it will automatically start recharging again. So inside of filament here, you can see we have our AMS. So it knows we have a bamboo lab spool in there. If I wanted to uh, load up another spool into the side, for instance, I can load some of this lime green uh, PET GHF into spool number two, or slot number two. And when I do that, this should automatically update. You can see right there, it's thinking about what it is. Once it recognizes the RFID tag, should populate the color and the type of filament that it is. There we go. So you can see it populated lime green PET GHF. We can take a look at it. It knows that it is PET GHF from the RFID tag. So that's pretty cool because the P1P, as you can see here, the screen doesn't let you choose the filament. And uh, that's not a good thing because then you have to resend the files every single time. So this is a really great addition to those of you who have a P1 series machine. So I can come into here and choose which slot in the AMS I wanna print from instead of having to rely on uh, our default profiles from when we originally sent that file over. So that is an awesome upgrade to P1S and P1P machines. Basically has the X1 screen for half the price. Now I know there's some controversy around this working with the new Bamboo Lab uh, security update. Uh, for now though, it seems to work just fine. I am on LAN mode and I believe they said things like this aren't affected by the new update. I could be wrong with that. They may have changed their minds or reversed on it again. But for now, this piece of equipment works and it is a great addition as long as you are aware that there are limitations that may be applied to it down the road from Bamboo Lab. The ability to change the filament right on the screen is like hands down the best feature of this little screen here. So with this screen installed, it's gonna give me the ability to just load up a bunch of files that I normally print, then I can send them on their way. Normally what I do is get onto the computer, choose the color and the file type, and then I'll send that over to the machine so I don't have any mishaps with the AMS and colors because I've had that happen before where I'll slice the file for like AMS slot one. And even though I go to restart it, it should pick up from AMS slot one. A lot of times it'll just randomly start from like three or four, which I don't quite understand because we originally sliced it for AMS one, which is the default mapping. Nonetheless though, this is gonna solve all of those issues for me. So thank you to uh, BQ for sending over the Big Tree Tech Panda Touch. They also sent this over. If you remember a few weeks ago, I was talking about the cryo grip plates and how I only really had luck with this guy here. Well, they sent this over with the Panda Touch and it's exactly the same as this. Uh, aside from a different color, the feel, the texture of it is the same as the one that I recommended to you a few weeks ago. So if you are in the market for one of the cryo grip plates, 
go with this color. You can see the difference between the two of them. This was the one that I said, hey, I wouldn't really recommend it. It's just not the same as the cryo grip that I had originally had luck with. Well, this one is. This is pretty much the exact same thing that that is. Uh, I don't know if you can see it well on camera, but this is really smooth, like smoother than the SuperTac plate from Bamboo, if you're familiar with that. This, it's, I don't know how to describe it really, but it's almost got like a, a grip to it. Like you, you'd put on your floors in the winter, or you put in your shower or something so you don't slip and fall. It's really grippy. So I'm excited to get this in to have another one of these. Like I said before, I've never washed the original one that I bought. Probably gonna wash this right off the bat just to make sure I've got all my little grease marks off of it from what I just did. But aside from that, I will not wash this, or at least I don't plan to wash this unless things start to go wrong with it. And I've got some new filament in from a company called Deeply. If you go onto their Amazon page, their storefront is an Elegu storefront, so I believe they are partners with Elegu, but what I can tell you is it's pretty much the exact same filament as Elegu. Uh, in fact, when I went to do my monthly order from Elegu's website, they were all out of stock of all of their uh, filaments. So I went to Amazon and purchased it from Deeply, and it's, it's the same thing. Um, aside from the spool looking a little bit different, the actual color of the filament, the sheen of the filament, just standard PLA, is exactly the same. Uh, I've printed with about one full spool of this and you couldn't tell the difference for the dumbbells, whether I printed it with this or this, so that's good. And shortly after that came in, I was contacted by Deeply and they asked if I wanted to try out a couple of their spools, so I said, sure. So I've got their matte green, it's like a frosted matte green loaded up inside of the plus four over here, printing out what I'll call the tissue box. It's essentially a pillow, and it takes up virtually the entire build plate of the Plus 4, but it goes over a tissue box. So when it's done printing, there's a bunch of supports that I'll have to remove from the bottom of it, but then you can set it over a standard size tissue box and cover it up, have a little pillow there to, uh, I don't know, make it look nicer. I, it's not something I would use. I think I'm going to give it to my grandmother, but um, just figured it's something good to test the full width of the build plate out. One of the other things they sent over was uh, this rock PLA. It's a little harder to see where I have it sitting now, but I needed a stand, something to lift up the printers, at least this one for now, to feed my four by six shipping labels into. And I really like the look of these rock filaments or these infused filaments. I've had a couple of them in the past. So when they gave me the option for it, I definitely was uh, keen to try that and I am not disappointed. I've printed out a few more things with this filament, including this little uh, box for charging my little microphone here. Uh, essentially, I have storage for this to go into here. This little thing is locked into place, so it can't just come loose, and I'm able to store my microphone in there and then the receiver inside of that end. So you can really see kind of how the, the rock texture or that filament really shines. You don't see any layer lines, almost like a carbon fiber infused filament. It, all these little imperfections in the filament is what I'll call them, really help to hide any of the layer lines. Because I couldn't get enough of the rock filament, I went and printed a, a rock. Essentially this little tabletop game though, you take this little axe and you're trying to find or trying to hit out the blocks that have these little pieces in there. So you can tap on it like that. We obviously didn't get it. I can see it through the top here. So there, we did it. Took me a while to get these things installed into here. They kept kind of wanting to push out and kind of have to install them this way. All in all, it comes together really nice. I couldn't get this last one in there to save my life. I managed to get all the other ones in there. I did print this again with this side down. So there were some areas that I didn't catch that needed support. So those came out a little bit rough, but rock filament, printing a rock, I'd say, uh, I'd say that looks pretty good. So this one is called a uh, marble. It's just a standard PLA from Deeply. If you're interested in picking up any of these filaments for yourself, I have links down in the description below to their Amazon listings. If you're familiar with Elegu filaments, then you won't be disappointed with this and any of your settings that you have set up or calibrated for your Elegu filaments can transfer right over to this from what I've found. So again, links are down in the description below for some Deeply filament. And a little update on the FL Sun S1 Pro, it's still sitting here waiting on basically an entire new effector unit is what they call it, this part here. 
And they are also sending, from what I can tell, more arms just in case something goes wrong with me being able to remove these from the original effector. It'll just make my life a little bit easier in the long run. It is coming from overseas, so it is going to take a little bit of time before I get that in and probably even a little bit longer before I actually get it replaced. That's all right, though, because I've got a slew of printers in here right now that are doing their jobs just fine. If you watched the last video where I set up this four dock shipping station, you would remember I wanted to put something up here so we could hold up our little shipping labels and stuff like that. So I'm going to get into the computer, design something up in Shaper 3D so we can mount a little three quarter inch rod to the back side of here. Essentially, the goal will be for this to hold all of our FBA labels in one way or another. So wrap them around here and we can use them as we need them. The only issue is this is four feet long and the spacing between here and here is slightly more than four feet. So we're going to have to design something that can extend out and catch both sides of these. Shouldn't be too difficult to do. So let's stop talking about it. Let's get into Shaper 3D, whip up a design real quick and see what we can come up with. So I guess my first main question is, does this actually fit in here? That works really well. I wish you could come back here and see that, but that's a perfect fit. So these fit really well into here, better than I actually was thinking they would to begin with. So that's nice, but it's still too short. So what I'm thinking is either on this side or maybe even from here to here, I can just cut this down and then we can have two separate ones instead of trying to force one long one across the entire length. And that's where a little handsaw comes into play. So that works really well. I printed these out of TPU over on the 5M Pro and it's just got that one little nub on the back of it. It's sized to fit a three quarter inch dowel rod. So I'll slide one end in over here and then I can attach the other end into here and then just slide it down into place and it's secured into there. I mean, for, for what we're storing on it, that's never gonna come off. The only thing I have to work around now is actually getting these labels mounted up there. Close enough. So it's a little bit better than having them kind of sp uh, spread out here, although I can't read the name that's on them, but it is nice being able to utilize the bins that are underneath for something else. If you would like the file for this, uh, again, I printed it out of TPU, so keep that in mind. It may perform slightly different out of another material, but I'll have this link down below in the description for you to go pick that up if you would like to download it for yourself. Well, well, look what just came from Samcraft. Let's get this guy opened up and uh, take a look at what he sent us. Now, I want to say a huge thank you to Sam over at Samcraft for throwing this on his fancy water jet and making us our own custom sign here. If for some reason you found me before you found Samcraft, I will link his channel down in the description below. So you can go check out all the cool stuff he's got going on with lasers and 3D printing as well. Well, that's where I'm going to wrap this one up, folks. Thank you again for joining me today in my little print farm workshop here. I've got some really exciting things coming up in the next couple of weeks on the channel. So if you're not already subscribed, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. And if you enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up so YouTube knows you enjoy this type of content. Until next time, folks, take care and have a great and successful week. See ya.